Hi YouTubers, uh, this one is for all of you that have got um, solar panels on your roof. If you've got solar up there and you, you, you know, you've you got your uh, array going, um, we all know quite well you've got to use that power during the day. Um, because if you don't use it wisely, um, basically the, the uh, provider, or if you're an electricity provider, gets that money off you for free. We don't want to be giving them any money. I certainly don't. Um, now, it's up to you to use that electricity during the day because the electric, as you know, their com the company, whoever you're with, uh, um, only pay you half. I estimate and pay you half of what you use. The other half is up to you. If you don't use it, basically, you lose it. So, you know, there's lots of ways you can use that, make sure you use that electricity, like running, obviously, your washing during the day and other various electrical items to use now, which is all fine if you're at home. Uh, but if you're not and you go to work and the house is empty in the day, then you could be wasting a lot of money. Um, I know you can set things up on timers and so forth to try and do it, but uh, it's, you know, not ideal. One of the best ways of using... Um, some of that power, and it's, it's already been done already, um, is to use an immersion. If you've got a, an ordinary domestic hot water cylinder like this, um, then you can use what's called an immersion, um, and it's, it's wide, um, basically, from your panels um, of your inverter, basically, to send 500 watts of power to your immersion heater uh, during the day, and it, it uses the solar power. Um, now, that's a real great idea, because hot water, is, is a very you know is, is a very energy thing it does take a lot of power it takes three kilowatts normally for your immersion heater to heat water up it needs to be on for an hour doesn't it to get it nice and hot but obviously at three kilowatts that's a lot of power you're running so i've got another idea now the inverter you can get that fitted it's called an immersion they're 350 pound up the cheapest i've seen them on ebay um, but to have it fitted as well by electrician which you will need to be um, you're looking at you know 500 pound so you've got to fork that out and you've got to wait to get that money back. You know, it's going to take you a while to get it back. So i come up with another idea. I, I couldn't afford that. So what I've come up with is um, something I was looking at the other day. I was looking at my um, my towel rail here. And I, I suddenly realised that, you know, that it had, you know, an element in there called a towel rail element. And it goes up inside the radiator up there and heats the radiator up. So I thought, well, hang on a minute. Let's have a look at the wattages of these. Now, you can get them 250 watts, free, 400, 500, 600. So I had an idea. And I decided I would buy one of these elements and I'm going to put it in my hot water tank. Now, I've already done it. I'm going to show you the video on how to do it in a second. Um, and it's not dead easy, but if you want to give it to a plumber, you could probably still get it all done and fit it for about 150 quid. Or if you want to do it yourself, the parts come to about 50 quid. Now, I'll show you mine fitted. And here it is there. Um, as I say, basically, it's a towel rail element going into the bottom of my cylinder. That, that tank's only 15 inches wide, so most tanks are wider than that these days because it is an old tank. So um, you will find um, it will fit easy enough. Um, you have to arrange it so you have this T and a drain off cock there. If you're not up to that, then you may have to get someone to do it for you. Um, now, strictly, you shouldn't use an iron T, uh, but it was a lot cheaper than a brass one. Uh, and I think because I've got a brass knuckle in between there, um, it's not going to cause too much reaction of the metals although people say no, you shouldn't use an iron tea but I've been plumbing for 30 years and I've never seen any reactions with it yet as long as you've got a brass fitting in between which I have there okay and this lot cost me about 50 pound um, to do and I've put a 500 watt element in there and I've found that I've been getting nice hot water all the time I get home and my tank is hot I've set it on a timer this wire goes up to a timer um, I've got it in the other cupboard there so I won't bother going in but it goes to a timer switches this on um, at 10 o'clock in the morning when the sun's up a bit and switches it off at four in the afternoon when the sun goes to set and I find I've got plenty of hot water every day and it's using up that spare capacity instead of giving it back to uh, the electricity company and we don't want to give them nothing they got enough as it is okay so that's my idea and i'll now show you the video on how that's fitted um if you don't fill up to it guys don't worry and if you don't want to do it it's up to you but this is just an idea um my idea and a way of, of um using some of that spare electricity that you've got running you know if you've got solar panels on your roof so okay that's it and i'll show you the video now um and just you know, it's up to you if you want to do it or not. So here comes the video. Okay. 
This is part of the uh, the job that um, you may or may not want to take on. It depends how you know how you feel about taking a bit of plumbing on, really. Um, but this is the stage where we're going to fit this element into this tank, and it's going to go into this feed here. So I'm going to drain this cylinder out of the hose outside. Turn the valve off first, of course. Drain it out, and we're going to just disconnect this. And using this T, we're going to push this all in and make this fit up. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, this is probably the dip most difficult part. Um, now, if you can't get this in the bottom of your tank there, because I'm lucky the fitness facing outwards, and I've got enough room to clear the, the, the element. But you can, if you can't get it in the bottom, you can fit it in the top in the expansion part of the tank and have your feed there as long as it's got enough room in the tea and you've got an inch fit in as you can see you've got plenty of room around that to allow the water to not stop you restrict it you know, cause it to um, have low pressure you've got plenty of room in that fitting to allow the pressure through that's why we're going to use this not really like to use an inch barrel fitting but it's the only thing that's going to fit there um, but i'm going to use a brass nipple in between to stop the metals from reacting okay so I'll take you through this now, so I'll take you through you bit by bit. Okay, we're at the tricky part now where we undo the feed. Turn that bowl out just so you can see. You're going to get a little bit of water out of this feed, the water's level to the bottom of there. We've put that way out and we're just unscrewing this one now. When we take this out in a minute, I'll show you how that bit goes back into that tank. Now, as you can see, I've made the T piece up, I've screwed the element in. I'm going to cable for it, it's going to go down under the floor for me because I've got a void that I can connect anything up to. Now I'm going to make this T piece up at the bottom of this because we mustn't allow hot water to go up the cold feed into the roof tank because uh, it's not a very nice thing to do. You've got to keep that water up there nice and cold. Um, you, it's one of those things about Legionnaires, you could, could start it off with a warm roof tank. I know they get warm in the summer anyway, but we don't want to aggravate things, so we'll take that cold feed down. Then we're going to come back up on this height, so we've got a U shape to stop the heat from going back up there and keep it straight into the tank. This element's only just fitted with this on because it's an extremely thin tank, it's only 15 inches in diameter. One of the old ones, most tanks to be 18 inch uh, sizes, you'll have no problem with that at all. Um, we'll go in dead easy. So we'll carry on with the next stage. Uh, now you can see the, uh, the completed job. The element is screwed in. To the T into the tank. We have a T piece and down and back up. And the reason for that dip down an arch is to stop the hot water from going up into the roof tank. We don't want to warm that up. We just want to warm up the tank. Uh, and that's the hardest part, really. This getting this element in is probably the most difficult. Um, as I say, if it proves too difficult, you want to get a plumber in to do that bit. Still, be worth doing. And don't forget, if it won't go in the bottom there, you can always put it in the expansion at the top. Uh, and that's it for the plumbing part, so I hope you're all right with that.